I've not seen such bravery. You know, box art is an interesting thing. It can be good, it can be bad, it can be unique, it can be... not that... Back in the day when magazines were relevant, box art was a great way to get me interested in games. And even if the game didn't seem all that interesting, sometimes the box art would just remain stuck in my mind. Razor Freestyle Scooter is one of those games. The game didn't look good, or even sound good for that matter, but for some reason or another, the box art has remained in my mind to this very day. It was small in all the ads I saw, so I always thought it was some kind of badass scooter professional, but it turns out that it's just some kid making a very unfortunate face. Now I know you're probably thinking, didn't scooters stop being cool after elementary school? Well, as a transportation method, yes they did. But it turns out that there are some people out there that can do some pretty impressive tricks on a scooter. Enter Razor Freestyle Scooter. It came out in 2000 for the PlayStation 1. This means that it was released between Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 and 3. Let's just be honest here, that's the franchise we're going to be comparing it to. The good news is that the developer, Shaba Games, worked on ports of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, Underground 2, and Project 8, so they seem to be at least somewhat accepted in the genre. The bad news is that the version of Razor Freestyle Scooter that I'm playing was developed by Titanium Studios, which also also made... Yeah, I don't know. Oh, this looks promising. A bunch of randomly materializing clip art scooter children are scooter... ing. Scooting? So these clip art kids are scooting. They're all happy, then they're surprised, then... A mystery. A giant robot picks them up and walks off with them. You know, typical scooter stuff. A crazed robot has taken your friends. Can you complete his challenges to save them? Why is there a giant robot abducting scooter children? Because fuck you, that's the story. And we're just gonna have to live with it. Sleek, functional, razor, handlebars, faster than synergy, razor scooters, scoot free. We've got a choice of playing as either Chad or Amy. Both of them look terrifying, and they have feet bigger than their forearms. Chad is the obvious best choice, though, because, as we all know, injuries make you better at things. Oh man, we get to pick scooter colors too? How did they manage to cram so much content onto one little disc? The first level is called Scooter Park, which I'm pretty sure are actually called Skate Parks. There's a list of objectives that we can complete, but it looks like all we have to do to clear the stage is get 10,000 points. At this point, I'm just curious to see what kind of tricks you can do on a scooter. You see, the scooter is like an unwanted love child of a bike and a skateboard. You can flip a skateboard, and you can get a lot of speed and go off-road on a bike. Put them together, and what do you get? None of that. Turns out that the main thing you do on a scooter is fall. You fall, and you fall, and you fall. Even when it looks like you're going to land safely on the ground, you fall. The tricks I do manage to pull off are pretty bland. Some of them don't even look like tricks at all. <laughs> oh yeah, that deserves some points right there. Level clear! Okay. The next level is called Schools Out with a Z. Because, you know, Z is the hippest letter of the alphabet. It's what all the kids are into. What kind of school is this? It's got vert ramps all over the place. There's like two lunch tables, a vending machine, and then all these skating ramps. The area looks so generic, they could have gotten away with calling it anything. Business, park, upstate, you know, whatevers. In the back of the level, it looks like they actually tried to make it look more like a school by putting in some buses and tennis courts. Good enough, I guess. Tony Hawk got this part of their games down really well. There were two school levels, that I can remember at least, and both of them actually looked like schools. You'd think that putting lockers in a school setting would be a no-brainer, but apparently the level designers had a very different idea as to what a school looked like. Since I'm talking about the Tony Hawk's games again, this seems like the perfect time to talk about the music. Tony Hawk games were known for having really kick-ass soundtracks, and on more than one occasion the games introduced me to some great songs and bands. Razor Freestyle Scooter's soundtrack contains a total of nine songs from five different artists. The bands have names such as Sick Shift and Sloppy Meat Eaters. 
Nice. It sounds like they tried to get some heavy rock and punk songs to match the style of Tony Hawk, but the mixture of punk music with the images of kids riding around on scooters ends up just being laughable at best. And while I can't play the songs for you because of copyright issues, I can give you my personal interpretation of some of the songs on the soundtrack. It's the songs you love to scoot to! Razor Freestyle Scooter, the imitation soundtrack! Gotta scoot now! Stub my toe! Lost the remote! I just want to die. Nine of the Scooter World's top music hits will get you and your kids in the mood to scoot. I don't know what I should do. Bleed out everywhere. Don't wait. Call now to get this family-friendly soundtrack for only $19.99. By the time I reached the third level, which is called Clock Tower, I was getting a little bit better at the game. I was doing tricks, stringing combos and all that jazz, all the while putting up with some less than impressive controls. I won't say that they're horrible controls, but they could be a lot better. The biggest crime is probably the slight delay between releasing the jump button and the jump actually occurring. This proved to be problematic when trying to time jumps and really made it hard to enjoy the game. Not to mention that sometimes I just fall through the level. Anyway, it was on this level that I discovered the greatest trick of all time. The hand clap. Now I'm not gonna sit here and say that I could ride a scooter off a ramp and clap my hands together, but isn't the point of these extreme sports games to go over the top and make things look cool? I mean, surely a game that starts with a giant robot kidnapping children could come up with something more exciting than a hand clap. Speaking of that giant robot, there has been no mention of him since the very beginning. I have no idea how scooting around in a skate park, school, and clock tower is supposed to save our friends, but we seem pretty convinced that it will. After clearing the clock tower level, a challenge level is unlocked called Sky Fortress 1. In the sky? Yes. Fortress? That might be stretching it a bit. Looks more like sky slab of concrete to me. Razor crew member Daryl needs your help. Brave the sky fortress and get all the razor wheels. Just look at all those exclamation marks. I just know this is gonna be exciting. Well, okay, maybe not exciting, but this does look simple enough at least. There's some wheels floating around and all we have to do is grab them. The problem comes in the controls. It's hard enough to go up a ramp and then come back down in the direction you intend to go, but the delay on the jump button really messes this level up. If you forget to jump a little early, you'll either be too low to grab the wheels or you won't be able to clear the gap at all. The time limit doesn't allow for more than maybe one mistake either. But after many, many attempts, I managed to defeat the dreaded Sky Fortress 1. I fell to my death, sure, but that doesn't matter matter in this challenge because the game says that I did it perfectly. In getting all the wheels, you have rescued your friend Daryl and foiled Mad Robot Norton. For now. So somehow 20 scooter wheels is all it takes to defeat a giant friend-stealing robot. And Mad Robot Norton? Could they have picked a less intimidating name for a robot? I'd be more afraid of Mad Robot Phyllis. And look at how happy he is. Daryl looks totally fine too. Surely all of this is just some misunderstanding and the robot just wanted to take these kids out for a fun time in his sky fortresses. But here I come on my scooter, clapping my hands and collecting wheels like some kind of applauding, wheel-thieving jackass. I'm sure Jillian, her name is probably Jillian, is having a great time with Norton. I don't want to be a party crasher again, so I'm just gonna stop playing. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm gonna stop playing. That's why. So there you have Razor Freestyle Scooter. It wasn't the worst game I've ever played, but there are definitely better alternatives out there. If you'd like to play a game that's just one huge advertisement for a scooter, or if you're just some kind of scooter enthusiast, maybe you'd enjoy it. I, however, don't fall under either of those categories, so it just kind of left me wanting to play some good old Tony Hawks, which is what I'm gonna go do right now.